Hi, my name is Faith, and today we have made our second video, question and answers regarding my life as a female in a wheelchair, and other things like mobility devices, standing up, questions you've always wondered and wanted to ask people in wheelchairs, but you haven't, or aren't comfortable asking in casual conversation, maybe you don't know the person well enough. So this video is just to address those questions, put it out there, feel free to send more questions my way, and I'll answer them in our next video. Sally Thomas asks, how far will your disability progress and is it life-threatening? Hi Sally, I miss you so much. Sally is a really great friend from Ottawa uh, playing basketball. And Ehlers-Danlos is progressive, however, I do not have the fatal form and type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Type 6 is in fact fatal and I'm lucky enough so far to have tested and be clear of it, but I do have type 1 and 3. So my disability will be progressive, my mobility will decrease over time, uh, chronic pain wise will increase, but hopefully I have an average life expectancy. Amanda April asks, um, do you have to depend on other people for help a lot or are you able to do a lot of things independently? What things can you do independently versus dependently? Hi Amanda, another good friend, actually a high school friend, and uh, Amanda and I used to run track together, so that's uh, an interesting question, Amanda. So I do rely on other people a lot, not by choice, but um, I mean, I, I need help and I'm not going to be afraid or ashamed to ask for it if I need it. I need help from, sometimes like in the snow, I'm going to need help getting through the snow, so maybe I need to be pushed all the way to the grocery store. I may need help maybe getting a ride if I don't have a car available. At the moment I don't have hand controls. I'm not sure if that's going to be another question. Uh, but So that's kind of hindered my mobility a little bit, not having a vehicle available. Um, I rely on Amber, who's holding the camera right now, a lot, and Amber's a huge, huge help. Uh, you know, it, things can become overwhelming and there are some things like carrying, you know, carrying or pushing a cart in the grocery store, that is just a huge help to have someone else with. And having Stella, uh, my dog that I mentioned before, is also a huge help. Uh, and she really helps and decreases my dependency on people, which is generally the aim of service dogs. Uh, service dog handlers are really looking to depend on their animal instead of so much depending upon caregivers that may be coming into your home, uh, loved ones, family, and things like that. So in that, in that sense, she's given me a lot further independence and as her training progresses, she'll, she will be giving me more and more independence. Um, but yes, I do depend on other people. I am not going to be ashamed to ask for help if that's reaching something, if that's, you know, getting pushed onto the bus, ask for help if you need it. There's no shame in asking for help, so. And how have your disorders affected you in a positive way? I am thankful for my disorders. Uh, it's not that life isn't challenging, it's just that it completely changes your outlook on life. I am thankful for everything I have, every one I have in my life, to a whole new level. Um, you. You know, one thing I get a lot of questions about is Dean. <laughs> Dean is my common law, my best friend. We live together. It has really shown in more ways than one that we are a really strong powerhouse couple. No, but <laughs> we're a really strong team. And, you know, some people don't want to deal with or have disability in their life for, you know, whatever reason but Dean has 100% risen to the challenge and actually he's, he, ri he rose to the challenge before I rose to the challenge. He was like, you can do this and I was like, ah! Uh, but in that respect, you know, it has really just strengthened our relationship, I guess you could say. Um, in terms of other things, I mean, it, it really opened my life back up to sports, that's another thing, because I did kind of, you know, I stopped playing hockey, you know, able-bodied hockey, and I stopped, you know, kind of being as active as I was before, and it actually kind of brought that back, you know, I've been able to 
have the opportunity to play sports, try out different sports. So that's a really good positive thing. Just being able to speak to people, um, even being able to create this format where we're just making a video that addresses questions that you may not feel comfortable asking directly to me. Or you may be wondering when you meet me, but you're not gonna, you know, as a stranger come up to me while I'm shopping and say, hi, I was just wondering, uh, you know, what's your life expectancy? <laughs> but I'm completely comfortable ask, answering these questions. I encourage questions because, you know, education cures ignorance. And people aren't ignorant by choice a lot of the time. Okay, people just haven't had the um, opportunity, I guess, to have a forum like this to ask questions. So, you know what, breaking down um, these barriers and hopefully making you understand how you can approach us and really just how we um, go about our everyday lives. Because I think there is some, you know, some confusion. Uh, I think people tend to think to a certain degree we have it harder than what we do. I mean, you know, we, we can generally do everything, but we're just sitting down. So breaking down that, just breaking down the assumptions is is a definitely a positive thing that has come from these conditions. I mean, yeah, it's an everyday challenge, but I'm speaking to you and hopefully I'm sharing a message of staying positive, staying active, and just keep going, keep pushing. Chelsea Wiseman asks, you have EDS, right? Do you drive? If so, what do you drive? Do you use hand controls or the foot? Good question. So this has been something I've been working on for about a year. What happened was I had my G1. I was a month away from taking my G2 before I got sick. So unfortunately, I had taken my driving uh, lessons, everything like that prior, and then kind of got a little bit knocked down and of course you have to modify your vehicle. Had an old van, we've gotten rid of it, and my baba, my grandmother, has uh, been kind enough to offer us her car, and I've been offered driving lessons uh, by a good friend. So now all we need is the hand controls. I cannot drive with my feet. Uh, if I hit the pedal, that could be, that, that may not be good if I have a spasm. I mean, I don't have control, right? Uh, so I don't use my feet. It's all gonna be hand controlled, it's gonna be pretty simple. You know, brake, gas, uh, nothing too complicated in terms of a wheelchair, van, nothing like that. Just I'll be able to transfer into a car, take, po my, take apart my chair, sorry, cut it, passenger seat, use my hand controls, and have that ability to have that independence, which will be amazing. Uh, just being able to get out and really just have that freedom have the freedom and have the independence back. That's a that's a big thing, being able to drive. Once that's done, you know, it it definitely increases your independence. I need I need it. So as soon as possible, it's not cheap. Um, hand controls are about a thousand dollars where I live and for the hand controls I need. So hopefully saving up that money over time and as soon as possible I would like hand controls. Are you afraid people will fall on you? People have fallen on me. So, <laughs> uh, you know, you kind of have to be, especially on buses in Ottawa, actually, you know, the buses, you're not locked in, you're not strapped down, not, nothing like London, Ontario. So when you get on a bus, there are people standing, you know, leaning over top of you. And if they don't grab onto the bars and that bus stops or, you know, breaks all of a sudden or whatever, they fall. Well, I'm down, so they fall onto me. And it has happened a few times, actually. Probably the best story that I have is I was trying really hard to go back to Auto IU to finish my degree, and I was newly sick. So I went back to classes, you know, you're like, you got this, you know, I'm gonna go back. And walking through the hallway, this kid sat on me. Like actually sat on me and he well, kind of like fell over like, you know, one of my wheels and ended up on my lap and he was just like sitting on my lap, you know, like this way. I'm like, hey, it was so awkward. He's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Totally freaked out. I was so embarrassed, like ran away. Um, but everyone was laughing. I was laughing because, you know, like people sit up, sit on me. It's, you know, kind of funny. Uh, so people have fallen on me and I'm careful when I get on buses because 
if they fell hard, you know, I've actually been hit in the face a few times on butts is because when people fall, um, you know, people tend to have to grab onto whatever's closest. Fortunately, I'm in the front of the bus, so that tends to be me. But yeah, it's happened. Just, you know, stay safe distance and uh, keep your eye out. Is it particularly offensive when people stare at you? It is human nature for our attention to be drawn to those who are different than us. Should we go along with this instinct or fight against it? I think that staring is a little bit different than glancing, you know. It there's a there's a line. You don't I've had people on buses, you know, say I'm, you know, parked, settled in, and they're just And it's just awkward. I mean, if you're gonna stare at someone, at least say hi, how you doing? Have a conversation, you know? I mean, saying hi isn't that is kind of like an icebreaker. I will bite, you know, I'll talk to you. But staring, I mean, I know it's totally human instinct, and you're right, people are curious, especially kids. Um, so I to that's, I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine if you look at my chair, check out my chair, ask me questions. But there is a little bit of difference between like for 20 minutes, like staring into my eyes and just making a super uncomfortable situation that I can't get out of. Um, although there have been a few instances where I've just stared back, like completely just, just played their game and just stared, stared into their eyes for as long as they had stared into mine and they backed down. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to play that game, you could make it really awkward and just stare into their eyes and then they, <laughs> they kind of like, oh, then they really realize that they're making you uncomfortable, you hope anyways, and they stop, <laughs> you know. You could have fun with it if you want, but it is human nature, I'm not gonna deny that, so, you know. Thank you all for watching. This hopefully concludes um, our question and answers for today. In our future videos, we will be addressing questions we've received in regards to Stella, my service dog in training, as well as me walking with my leg braces. So if you want to see a paralyzed person walk with leg braces or a stand up um, or what that would even look like, how I do it, check out our new video, like and subscribe, and you'll receive it automatically. So see you next video. Thanks guys.